and I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC News break. Close to two dozen workers remain off the job at Precision Packaging at Lower Estate St. George. This after protesting management's efforts to change some of the terms and conditions of their employment. Precision Packaging, which produces and prints plastic bags used by manufacturers and supermarkets across the island, is owned by Goddard Enterprises Limited. At the heart of the matter is a change to the long-standing shift system by management of the company. Workers say the company operates a near 24-hour basis with a two-shift system with about staff of 50. CBC understands that the dispute is now before the Labour Department and talks between officials of the company and the Barbados Workers' Union are set to be held at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Barbados is being advised to be vigilant in ensuring it has the necessary, the necessary legislative framework and mechanisms to deal with fraud and cyber crimes. Director at BDO Forensic Accounting in Trinidad and Tobago, Stefan Gray, says without those systems, local fraudsters and others from around the world will exploit the situation. He was speaking on the sidelines of a fraud management and controls seminar organized by the Institute of Internal Auditors Barbados chapter. If in the United States or Europe they are strengthening their anti-fraud measures or their money laundering measures, for example, what it will mean is that the money launderers will just look around the world and see which is the easiest targets. And if the Caribbean continues to have low detection rates in white collar crime, then they will obviously come to the Caribbean to execute their um, um, proceed or that illicit activity. Seminar coordinator Cecile Reed says it was organized bearing in mind the threat fraud poses to businesses, organizations, and the country as a whole. She adds that more training is coming. And we're going to be doing more courses in 2015 fraud and the non executive board member, fraud in the executive board member, fraud in your rank and file, so that we can address what is an emerging need for information and for training in the Barbados public. I think fraud is at the forefront and as we are seeing the Caribbean become more vulnerable, all um, our experts are saying that the Caribbean is being targeted. We want to make sure that in Barbados, that's one destination that they don't want to visit because we're prepared. Well, there's yet another call for Barbadians to buy local. This time, it's coming from Barbados Industry Solutions, a recently formed committee of manufacturers. Chairman Def Jeff Evanson made the plea while announcing that the group will be hosting a Barbados Industries Expo in an attempt to revive manufacturing in the country. Our expo is simply to expose all of the hotel, the hotel sector, the school sector, the sports and cultural sectors, to the products that are available locally. We are essentially a part of the Buy Local campaign, but we are focusing our energies on these two target areas for the time being. Uh, Barbados Industry Solutions was formed simply to re-promote and re-energize the manufacturing sector in Barbados with a view to, with a view to, to what was your word? Reducing. Reducing the dependence on foreign, on foreign imports. Another member of the committee, John Watson, says the aim is to make sure there is no devaluation. This, he says, can be done through the redevelopment of the manufacturing sector. It's to make sure that Barbados' dollar is never devalued because that would be disastrous for our country. And we hope to do that by stimulating the, the, the people in the public to buy local, and to buy, obviously, Barbadian manufactured goods. Um, we will do that through saving for an exchange through the buying of local products. And this exhibition and our effort will be a step towards exports so that the manufacturing sector will gain for an exchange through both saving and earning for an exchange. Well, the group believes that the successful revival of the manufacturing industry could generate thousands of jobs and, by extension, reduce unemployment. Students from across the island might now be in a better position to identify what career path to take. 
Secondary and tertiary students were exposed to a number of universities and colleges in the, US, the United States when they attended a college fair at the Hilton Hotel yesterday. The programs being offered also make provisions for students wanting to pursue non-traditional careers. Meanwhile, students spoke about what they learned at the fair. I learned that colleges is not a lot of money, for sure, and <laughs> some colleges have qualifications and certain standards, and I think I um, have the ability to apply myself to get those standards. I learned that there are various colleges that can help you to further your studies in the particular career you would like to go in. I'm going to learn about mechanical engineering, which is telling us the process that we'll be going through, like um, how we learn how to do robotic engineering. We'll be going along a lot of places and learn how to do mechanic, mechanics. Uh, I also may I learn about business studies. I learned about various colleges teaching different stuff, like, well, if you want to major in certain parts, and it was very, it was very educational. Barbados has made progress in the area of human rights. This from Minister of Foreign Affairs, Senator Maxine McLean, at a human rights leadership seminar held at the Hilton Hotel. Minister McLean says Barbadians have been able to improve their quality of life. And while there are some challenges, human rights remains a priority for Barbados. She adds that Barbados has a presence at the international level. This is reflected in our voting pattern at the United Nations and our adherence to almost all of the core human rights treaties. Barbados is currently a party to six of the nine core human rights treaties. Our strong commitment to human rights in the international arena originates from national policy, where it occupies a central role. And this has resulted in priority being placed on building a national infrastructure supportive of the protection of human rights by promoting good governance. Head of the Human Rights Division in the Commonwealth Secretariat, Karen McKenzie, notes the two-day seminar will focus on how best Barbados can meet the recommendations of the Universal Periodic Review within the four-year time frame given. You have a four and a half year window, which is not really very long, um, to progress the recommendations which the country has accepted um, last year. It is, of course, an arduous task. It is challenging because none of us have the budgets that we would need uh, to execute on those recommendations. We don't even have the human resource capacity. But we don't have the luxury of sitting back and saying, um, this can't be done because I don't have X. I think the question, and we will explore that over the next two days, should rather be about what can I do within the limitations Multi-Choice Television is updating its current system and it says this may cause some receivers to display a reboot message. Now if you're receiving this, if you're experiencing this, follow these steps. Remove the antenna cable, change the channel from 809 without reattaching the cable. Once you've done that, then you reattach the cable. When the channel update prompt appears on screens, press OK. Once channel update is complete, you may resume viewing at channel 809. MCTV apologizes for any inconvenience caused and thanks you for your patience and understanding during this update. A Dominican has been ordered to pay the court $20,000 or face 18 months in prison after he was held trying to smuggle two kilograms of cannabis into the island. Members of the drug squad arrested and charged 27-year-old Abia Tatwana James of pos for possession, intent to supply trafficking and importation. James arrived at the airport on Sunday night about a quarter to ten. He cleared immigration and was interviewed by police who searched his luggage and found the drugs in a transparent plastic package in the false bottom of his suitcase. James appeared in court on Monday, pleaded guilty, and was fined the $20,000 on the importation charge. He was convicted, reprimanded, and discharged for the remaining offenses. Time for a break now, but we'll have regional and international news after we come back.